Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my video for the Batman movie for Wonder Woman 1984, the Suicide Squad movie, Justice League Snyder Cut, all the big panels and trailers and footage that are gonna be coming at DC Fandom in a little while. I'll be doing videos for all that stuff, so be sure to subscribe to get it. I'll do special giveaways as part of that too. I had to sign a bunch of forms, so Warner Brothers and DC are sending me a giant box of stuff in the next week. I'll be doing special giveaways as part of all those videos, and I'll explain the schedule for when everything is going to be releasing at the end of the video too. But just going down the list, starting with number five, starting with the Batman movie panel. No surprise that it's the last one of the night. They always save the biggest panels at Comic-Con because this is sort of a replacement for Comic-Con for the end of the night on Saturday. Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson are going to be there answering questions, talking about the movie. It's a pre-recorded panel, so they've already made it, but they did announce they'd be bringing some special surprises, which most people believe is going to be more test footage, similar to the teaser trailer from earlier this year where they showed off Robert Pattinson in the new Batman suit for the first time with the new version of the Batman theme music Michael Giacchino's composing. This time, since we've already seen early looks at the new Batmobile, we'll probably get some cool new previews of that. And of course, Catwoman in the villains in full costume. The Riddler, Penguin, Carmine. Even though the movie is based on the Long Halloween comic story, though, I'm not expecting Catwoman to wear the purple Long Halloween suit. There's a lot of fan art of Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman out there that I think is pretty close and relatively accurate to what she's going to look like during the movie. And if you didn't realize earlier this year, we already saw footage of Catwoman, but it's her riding with Batman on their bikes through the cemetery, and she's wearing a black jacket and a helmet, and it's her stunt woman, and it's Robert Pattinson's stunt man in that Batman suit. So it kind of gave us a hint for her character in the movie. Plus, we've seen Zoe Kravitz walking around in real life with that short Selena Kyle hairdo that she's been sporting. They haven't been filming that much on the movie. That's why I don't think that they've cut a real traditional trailer or anything like that. Originally, when the movie was still going to be released next summer, the first real trailer wasn't supposed to come till December. So everything's just been delayed a little bit. Right now, the movie is coming out in October, so we could get more footage in December, or they could just hold footage until they release the Justice League Snyder Cut next spring and attach a Batman trailer to that. But recently, they were talking about what's going on in the movie. The writer was talking about how they explore Batman's trauma in a much bigger way than previous Batman movies had. The way he and Matt Reeves have talked about it, the movie is about Batman's soul, or the battle for Batman's soul that he metaphorically wages while he's also battling the villains. You could draw some similarities to the stuff that Zack Snyder was setting up during Batman v Superman with Ben Affleck's Batman in the dead Robin costume, all the implications about his past, why he stopped being Batman for a period of time before Superman and the Kryptonian showed up during the Man of Steel movie. They would have explored a lot of that part of Batman's trauma during the Ben Affleck version of the Batman movie when he was still part of the project a couple years ago. I've already done a couple videos about what the plot of that movie was going to be. It would have been vastly different in tone and look from the Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson Batman movie. But I think so much stuff is being added back into the Justice League Snyder Cut. That movie is going to be over four hours long. We might get a lot of that lost Batman storyline as part of the Snyder Cut. So number four, obviously, there's the Justice League Snyder Cut panel. Zack Snyder and Henry Cavill are supposed to be there with some of the other Justice League actors. Some of them are also doing their separate panels for other movies, like Gal Gadot is doing a Wonder Woman 1984 panel. I don't think that Ben Affleck is going to be there, but that's fine. Zack Snyder has already been posting a ton of previews of the trailer footage that he's going to be showing off. He hasn't said if it's going to be just a really long clip like extended footage when he released that big Justice League clip back in 2016 at Comic-Con, or if it's going to be a more traditional trailer, but it should be pretty badass. He's been hyping up all the special effects, the redesigns of Steppenwolf, and hyping up Darkseid, so it's possible we also see some more Darkseid deleted scenes, in addition to the Darkseid scene that he released a few months ago. I've already done a video on that trailer, so I'll put a link in the description. And I will put links in the description for all the different trailers that they release. I've already done a ton of videos on what's going to be in the Snyder Cut and how the storylines are different from the theatrical cut. There was a whole Black Suit Superman scene that he released a few weeks ago and all the Green Lantern scenes that he's been teasing since they first announced the project. Zack Snyder was also teasing the way they're planning on actually releasing the movie. So he said that they could release it as just a giant four hour movie on HBO Max or they could break it up into a couple different episodes and air it weekly for a couple weeks. They'll reveal all those details next week at the big panel. But as of right now, I don't think there's any big plans for Zack Snyder to come back and do any brand new DC movies or TV series. That could always change. I mean, never say never. But I think right now, just the plans are for him to do the Snyder Cut and that's it. 
For those of you that were asking about all the Ben Affleck rumors, that Ben Affleck stuff kind of went out the window when they announced that Michael Keaton was coming back to cross over into all the new DC movies and be the de facto multiverse Batman from the Tim Burton movies. So number three, the Flash Flashpoint movie panel in Michael Keaton Batman. The producers and the director have already explained the basic plot of the movie and the major news outlets have already explained Warner Brothers overall plans for Michael Keaton's Batman in the new movies. Some of that could always change down the road just depending on scheduling issues. But you've all seen or read a version of the Justice League Flashpoint storyline so you know kind of how that story moves. They're not using it to retcon out Ben Affleck's Batman of the DCEU or anything like that, even though Keaton is becoming the new Batman of the DCEU temporarily, just because Robert Pattinson's Batman of the Matt Reeves Batman movie is supposed to be in a separate continuity. I know it sounds confusing, there's going to be at least three new Batman on screen in the next year. You have Michael Keaton's Batman in the Flash movie, you have Ben Affleck coming back in the Justice League Snyder Cut, and then Robert Pattinson's Batman in the Batman movie in October. It'll be a really good time to be a Batman fan next year. Absolutely zero coincidence that I just updated my social media profile pictures. The way they talk about changing the Flashpoint storyline though, they're not going to do the big Atlantis, Wonder Woman, Aquaman war, it'll be a much smaller version of that storyline, and they haven't explained how they're going to fold in Michael Keaton's Batman to the original Thomas Wayne parts of the Flashpoint story, because Thomas Wayne isn't supposed to be in the Flashpoint movie. Right now I'm just expecting a Flash of Two Worlds type of twist because Ezra Miller keeps talking about being a multiverse Flash crossing over into other universes. So the Flash of Two Worlds is just the story of how the Flash in the comics accidentally wound up on Earth 2 meeting Jay Garrick, but it sounds like in the Flashpoint movie it'll be him winding up in the Batcave of Michael Keaton's Batman. He thinks he's going to visit the Ben Affleck Batman but accidentally winds up in Keaton's Batcave. They haven't confirmed all the other movies that Keaton is supposed to cross over into besides the Flash movie, only the Batman Beyond plans that they have in the future. Live action, Batman Beyond, down the road eventually. Cyborg is also supposed to be a huge part of the Flash movie, Ezra Miller's Flash even referenced him when talking to Grant Gustin's Flash during that Crisis on Infinite Earths cameo scene. Just as he's disappearing, he says he was talking to Victor, as in Victor Stone aka Cyborg, about the existence of the multiverse. Zack Snyder also said that in the original Justice League sequel plans, Cyborg would have been the one to help Flash make the time travel calculations in order to go back and warn Batman to save Lois Lane so that they could save Superman from being MC'd by Darkseid in the Anti-Life Equation. That was what they were setting up with that nightmare scene from Batman v Superman, so hopefully they'll pay that off during the Justice League Snyder Cut. This is actually what that time travel suit looked like, and I'm expecting them to introduce a brand new Flash suit during the Flash movie. But number two, then there's the Wonder Woman 1984 panel and the Suicide Squad movie panel. They're going to be dropping a new trailer for Wonder Woman 1984. Cheetah will be in it. I know they've been saving so much of her for last. I'm assuming that's mostly because they've been tuning the special effects for her character because she sort of evolves into Cheetah as the movie goes along. These are some of the recent clips that they've released that have some Cheetah stuff in it. They're really holding back with the Cheetah stuff. But the movie is supposed to come out in October, there's always the possibility that they have to delay it again, but because Disney is doing that big experiment with Mulan, releasing it on Disney Plus in a couple weeks no less, if that goes well for them financially, then there's always the chance that Warner Brothers tries a hybrid release schedule where it comes out in theaters some places and video on demand other places. But James Gunn is doing a really big Suicide Squad movie panel with most of the cast, hopefully you'll be able to see John Cena on screen, post all the memes in the comments. He did tease that there'd be a first look at the movie, I don't know if that's going to be a full trailer or a teaser trailer or some test footage, but we'll probably get a look at the characters in their costumes. Then number one, there is a mystery panel that they're doing for a surprise unannounced movie that they're going to be revealing for the first time. The panel is only 15 minutes long, so it's super quick, but this could either be the new Green Lantern Corps movie that they're still making but haven't talked about in a while, the Green Lantern HBO series that they've already teased, and a lot of people I know are hoping for a new Superman Man of Steel movie announcement, but I don't think that that's going to happen. We'll find out though, there is a secret mystery movie that they will be revealing next weekend. Anything that I don't get to on Saturday, I'll just do videos for on Sunday or Monday, so no worries. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those videos when I post them. But congratulations to Brian Clark, you're the giveaway winner from my last big DC video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Everyone click here for that brand new Wonder Woman 1984 trailer and click here for that other Batman trailer. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, I'll see you guys tonight. <laughs>